Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. So here is the latest attempt to reproduce an After Effects logo animation using Motion 5. The source animation comes from these guys, north to south, and it's from their portfolio page over at the Innovato Market. Uh, with this one, the most difficulty I had was with the emitter at the end. Um, just for the time I put in, I couldn't get the emitter to follow the same kind of distribution as this one has. Um, when you see the project file, I've tried uh, a few simulation behaviors on there. Um, wind, random motion, and I had the most luck with using uh, repel from, using a null shape down here to push them up in the way. Um, but if I had more time, that's what I'd try and improve on. Okay, let's go and have a look at the project file. Okay, so here is the project file. And Okay, so the, this lead shape here, uh, you'll find it in these groups, the lead shape group here. And you'll see there's a few different groups, so um, there's probably better ways to do this, but this is what I've worked out so far. This is a rectangle, and when you have a dig into the project file, you'll see that it is keyframed in the the rectangle shape is here and you'll see that it's keyframed in geometry for roundness and width and height and that is what is driving the transformations so the thing uh, to the thing that I do um, to get this kind of motion is groups within groups within groups. You can see each group has been assigned uh, like a task. Uh, so I haven't found a better way to do this in all my time with motion. Uh, but we know, um, for example, this rectangle has an anchor point and I want the shape to rotate around it. Uh, but I'm going to need that anchor point later on when I want to squash the shape here. Uh, so the thing to do is to place the rectangle into an upper group. And with this I now have, have another anchor point to use. And that anchor point I can use to squash things down. This is keyframed on the Y scale. Or we could use a logarithmic behavior. Yeah, lots of guides here to line things up. Uh, and then uh, this group here, squash up, I actually nerfed that group, but that was there to squash it up at the end. Uh, and again, we've placed everything into another group up here, which is the second squash when it reaches the bottom here. There is uh, another project file that I'll put up for you if you want to check it out. This jumping square here, it sort of explains what I just talked about um, and it's a more simple project file to get through. So this square is squashing and jumping using uh, that same method. I've got uh, logarithmic behaviors to do the squashing down and you can see we've got the rectangle, uh, which in this template, the rectangle is doing the squashing. And this, the group it's in is doing the, the y-axis and rotation. And then 
these guys are sitting in this group up here, which is squash 2. So that's where we get the next squash. Uh, because when we have flipped it around from the start to this position, the anchor point has changed. And so this logarithmic behavior is working on this group's anchor point instead. If it was to work on the same rectangle, then it would squash in this way at this point. Okay, so pretty much everything else in this project are things that we've covered in previous reproductions. Uh, these elements here, these lines, these are just uh, lines that are animated with the first and last point offset. Uh, the one in the middle is a solid line here, and this one and this one, these are using the dot and dash brush source. And we've got this little emitter flying these three shapes out the top. And that's covered in previous reproductions as well. Okay, just a quick one today. Um, the project files are there for you to download. I hope it's useful for you with your future projects. And thanks for watching.